And I'm here with Heath today. Heath, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Heath Fogelman. I am uh, co-founder of Bridges, which is an a online platform and soon to be an app launching soon. Uh, okay. So, uh, so Bridges is an online platform, soon to be an app that uh, connects people by their differences uh, into one-on-one -on -one conversations where they can discuss uh, those differences and, and learn a little bit about each other, build some understanding across these uh, many divides that we see uh, in, our, in our society. Right. All right. I like this. So this is political and um, is the divide, is it, is it inside a certain community or is it the broad spectrum of all politics? It's well, it's political and it goes beyond political. So, I mean, everything's political, I guess, these days. But right. It's, but it's explicitly political and that you put in your leanings, you know, left, right, center, whatever that may be. But the, um, there's other categories as well. Um, religion, uh, gender, gender identity, race, um, all of these key things that uh, that we feel really define you as an individual, define how the world sees you and how you see the world. And, and their fault lines in, in our society, especially, but I think increasingly around the world. And um, it's all about building bridges uh, across that and, and getting people outside of their social bubbles and their echo chambers. So you go on bridges, you put in what inf other information you want about yourself. Um, you want to share your religion, share your gender identity. You can do that. And then you'll connect with people who are different in those factors and have a conversation with them and help them understand you better and learn to understand their point of view better as well. Okay. Now, what happened is I have a couple questions. Seems yep. like that could be one of the difficulties is going to be anger management. Yes. Yeah. Uh, definitely. So there's a, there's a few ways that we've got um, to help with that. Uh, one, uh, every time you have a conversation with someone, you're going to mm -hmm. have an opportunity to rate that person um, at the end of the conversation and potentially at you know key points throughout the conversation as well. So uh, just a few cup, a couple questions. Um, things like, you know, did you enjoy talking to them? Were they open-minded? They shared their views. Are they interested in your views? Would you want to talk to them again? You do a five-star rating for each of those that will aggregate up into a community rating. So for people who are the angry ones and the trolls, which are going to be inevitable, I'm sure, mm -hmm. um, they're going to get weeded out by those community ratings pretty quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. people are not going to want to talk to you if you've got a one-star community rating because mm -hmm. you're just calling people names and attacking people. Um, so uh, that's going to be the major sort of control for it is that community rating. And we've got other other things that we'll be looking at and the back end of things as well to identify people who are misusing the platform and, and uh, you know, making it uh, not work like it should. Right. I really like that idea. And I think that right now the thing is we have a lot of the social media that's actually doing that. Facebook does community rating. However, we don't get to see it. No one gets to know. But if you're out there trolling and everybody's flagging you, your algorithms are going to slow down. Your shares aren't going to go as much. But the problem with that is nobody gets told when they're what they're being rated for and what they you know what they did wrong. Why are they in Facebook jail this time? They have no idea. It could have been yeah. from oversharing or it could have been for calling someone a name. So right. now you're going to address this, but then you're going to handle it kind of the same way, but you're going to make it transparent. Correct. Exactly. Yeah, very transparent. You know exactly what you're being rated on. Um, you know, we're going to communicate the rules of the platform on a regular basis, um, which kind of leads into another thing. You're talking about that rage factor. Um, we, I feel like as kind of a society, have forgotten how to have a civil conversation. And it largely due to other platforms where there is a premium put on not being civil and on attacking people and, and getting your zinger in, you know. Um with us, what we want to do is work with content creators and experts in the fields of, uh, you know, conflict management, uh, civil discourse, communication, and help them understand how to handle something that maybe isn't uh, ideal. Maybe someone says something that's offensive to you. The first response might be, oh, I want to attack them. And, you, you know, you're an idiot. Why did you say that? Right. But just take a step back. Take a breath. Realize if they're on bridges, they're making an effort to connect. They probably didn't mean to offend you. We want to have pointers and tips and tricks um, to deal with those kinds of things. And, you know, conversation starters, like how do you start a conversation with someone that's fundamentally different than you in a way that makes sense, you know? So we're going to be educating people not only on how to, how to work on the bridges platform, but hopefully they can, you know, uh, generalize those, uh, those lessons to other platforms into real life as well.
Nice. That is great. Like uh, they slack on that in school. I have a big issue with the public school system and the civil discord. Um, yeah. They don't like civil discourse and they actually teach us how not to engage in it growing up. We've all heard the don't talk about politics at the dinner table. I think the reason why we have Trump is because we don't talk about politics at the dinner table. Yeah. And I mean, you, you just touched on something there with most of these platforms. They connect you to people who are like you in some way. They have they share the same uh, friends. They watch the same media. They share the same ideas, et cetera. You inevitably end up building your social bubble and you get at this whole audience of people who feel very, very similar to you about most things. But the problem is that audience, when you actually make an effort to engage with someone on the other side, that audience becomes a posse. If you don't attack that person for being a Trump supporter, for example, in this case, right. then they're going to jump in and do it and they're going to get on you for not doing it, you know? Right. So that's that's the problem with those social bubbles and those those one to many platforms, which most of them are set up like that. That's why Bridges is all about connecting by that difference and pulling you out of that bubble into a one on one conversation. No audience, no posse. You can ask questions that you wouldn't be allowed by your own friends to ask on Facebook conversation. Right. I, that yeah. I, yeah, so true. Now I don't personally, I don't care, but most people do. And it's, it's yeah. even hard for everybody to like r get involved. And then you get stuck into like the democratic platform and suddenly you have to abide to every one of those policies. And how dare you think differently yeah. on one single policy? You're right. suddenly the other side. Yeah. Yeah. And that's very dangerous for our country. So I really like this Bridges idea. I'm going to pull up the website just yeah. so people can look at it. And maybe you could tell people how to get to it and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So so the uh, so the website is makebridges.com. Um, right now, uh, it's it's, you know, pretty basic, pretty clean. Um, you know, we'll, we'll revise it to probably make it a little more aesthetically pleasing at some point. But uh, very simple, uh, you know. Um, what is Bridges? Why do we need Bridges? Some information there about you. But you go in, you want to register, um, you, you click sign up, you're going to share um, your uh, email address and set up a password. There's going to be a, uh, a email verification that's sent to your email uh, to, to do that. And then um, once you're past that level, you're going to you're going to share the information about you that you want. So basically, I think we have five factors right now. Like I said, politics, race, religion, um, uh, gender identity, and there's always a fifth one. I forget, but we've yeah. got those four things. And you share about yourself what you're willing to talk about because those are the factors you're going to be matched to other people who are different than you about. Yeah, okay. So then, um, so Bridges is, is uh, it's again about connecting by your difference. So um, once you get in there and you sign up, you create your profile, whatever things you shared about yourself, your religion, your race, whatever it may be. Those are factors you can connect on. You hit that connect tab um, and it's going to show you what do you want? It's going to ask you a question. What do you want to talk about? You choose one of those topics. Next step is going to be who do you want to talk to? You're going to see a scroller of people who are different than you in that way. There's going to be some red um, uh, lettering there. Those are ways they're different. So they're different in that way as well as maybe some other ones. There's going to be some green um, factors as well. Those are ways you're similar. You scroll to the right, you get people who are more and more similar to you. You scroll to the left, you get people who are more and more different than you. Yeah. So you have a choice of who you want to connect with, someone who's a, very much like me, but we disagree on religion or on politics or whatever, or someone who's absolutely different than me in every way. I'm curious to talk to them or kind of someone in the middle who's you know a little different, a little, little the same. Right. So then you just click start a conversation and uh, you're going to have a dialogue with that person. You open uh Open with an icebreaker. Yeah, hey, I see that you're, you know, this way. I'm this way. I'd love to talk about, you know, why we're different or, you know, what makes you feel that that's the right way or whatever. So it's just really about connecting um, about those differences across the, uh, across those divides and yeah. trying to connect people to talk. I mean, our mission is connecting people with differences to foster understanding. That's really all we want to do because we don't understand the people on the other side. We demonize them. We dehumanize them. We vilify them. Um, and these other platforms really uh, feed into that. We're all about let, if you talk to a person, you learn to understand them uh, very quickly. You learn that they're not as weird or strange or evil or whatever you may you may think, you know, with your, your pre bias um, on them. Uh, and probably you're going to learn they're 95 percent the same as you are. 
even if you have fundamental differences about something. Right. And that is very true. We all are human. We all want to be loved. We all don't want to feel pain. We don't want suffering on ourselves. And right. most people don't want suffering on other people. We just have all different perspectives and we exactly. were raised differently and people don't understand it. And the issue thing is great because let's say if you're, you know, left, and you believe basically all the things that, let's say, Bernie Sanders runs with, but then there's one thing that you just don't quite agree with. You can go to this platform, make bridges, and you can talk to other people. I think the corporate news and a lot of the powers to be don't like that. And they fear, I noticed with me, I have a lot of people fearing that, um, I don't know how to get it. They're like so scared of civil discourse because they're scared that our ideas might fail or something. But if our ideas aren't good enough, then we should test them. I'm confident in most of the ideas I stand right. on. So I want to argue it all day and I will change my mind if someone could show me otherwise. Exactly, exactly. And there's there's a definitely an element of that because you're going out to learn about other people, but those people are wanting to learn about you as well. They're going to ask you questions and ask you to, you know, why do you think or feel or identify that way? Um, if you don't have good answers, then maybe there's, you know, you should do some homework or maybe you should think a little more about why you believe what you believe. The, the platform is not necessarily about proselytizing or trying to convert people or anything. It's really about understanding. But I believe in the, right. the process of putting ourselves out there. I've had it happen to me where I'm having a, a discussion and I realize I don't have a good reason to believe what I believe. I go back and do a little more research and, you know, I've had to change my mind sometimes. You oh, know? yeah, me too. A lot in the last four yeah. years. I've yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's healthy and people need to, we, we've got such a society, I feel like, where being wrong is some kind of personal affront, you know, <laughs> like it, it's a personal failing, a moral failing if we're wrong. So we can't be wrong, even when we are, we'll defend the wrong position forever. We're always we wrong. can't be wrong. Yeah. So <laughs> it's fine to be wrong. It, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Actually, yes, I... The, the thing is, I noticed there's a really good thing that happens when you're wrong. I thirst for knowledge. And one yeah. of my favorite um, chemicals in my brain is when I'm learning. Like nothing am I more addicted to learning than anything else. Like I love to learn. And when I'm wrong, suddenly I just learned something huge. I'm like, right. oh, click. Yeah. Oh, I was wrong. This is good. I feel great right now. But people don't see it that way. So I well, appreciate then, everything you're doing, man. Yeah. This is awesome. And so the, so the, the platform is up. It's live. We're trying to really what we're trying to do is build an audience on the platform online right now because our app you see there is is launching soon. We're looking to launch the app in February next month. OK. Um, and uh, we would love to have a pretty, you know, as broad a, a community already there as possible so that as newcomers are coming in, there's always someone there to actually have the conversation. You don't want we don't want people throwing out conversation requests, dialogue requests and say and not getting a response. Right. Um, we want activity going on. Right. You know, the more we do, I think the better it's going to be. So, you know, right now we're really just trying to get people to make bridges dot com, create that account, throw out some dialogue requests, try to get some conversation started. And then once that app goes live, we'll be on people's phones right in that that medium that they're already doing their communication anyway. Nice. Right? Now I have a right. question. Are there any other like um, rules about censorship or anything other than being angry or name calling or rude? Yeah, I mean, we definitely want people to have a freedom of expression and you can have a heated debate about things that are very sensitive and there's nothing wrong right. with that. Um, no. We're definitely going to be uh, diligent about things like, um, you know, threats and, and you know, name calling, t that kind of trolling. You know, right. you can use curse words in a conversation and it's perfectly fine, right? right. But when you're, when you're attacking with them, that's yeah. different. You know, right. We can talk about we can talk about the N word in a in a responsible and an interesting and an intellectual way. But when you start throwing that out as an insult, that's not going to be acceptable. So right. people are going to have the option to report people who are violating those rules, not just rate them poorly, maybe, but report them as well. And if they're violators, we don't want them on the platform. If you, if you can't handle the responsibility of having a a civil discourse and being um, kind and and thoughtful, then go somewhere else. And that's and right. I, I like that. I like that. But what about like promoting candidates? Is that okay? Um, I, again, it's it's not meant to be a proselytizing pl platform, but everybody's got a candidate they like. So yeah, if you want to go on and say, hey, I love Bernie, um, and and we're going to add topics, you know, uh, throughout the, the the year and years and to come, cool. um, things that are timely and things that give other uh, ways to connect. So yeah, I mean, one of our first things could certainly be who's your favorite Democratic candidate, and then everyone's going to choose one who has a favorite. 
And then now there's a conversations to have across all those people who have a different answer. So yeah, yeah talk about your candidate, you know, um, it's one-on-one. -on -one, so it's not, I can't see anybody truly campaigning here, but you can right. certainly say, look, Bernie's better because of this, or, you know, Warren's better or whoever's better. And this is why I think what I think. Um, oh, yeah, so well, I do some campaigning for Bernie and I do social media a lot. And I like, I hear all this stuff. People have Facebook. I do phone calling. I've done a little bit of door knocking events around here. And I'll be honest, I've, had more results, positive results, and more people saying they would vote for Bernie and converting more people, or maybe not 100% converting them, but getting them to say, oh, that makes sense on social media than anywhere else. I get hang up calls, people hang up, and I get sweared at on the phone. I'm eating dinner, so much anger over the phone. And when I'm on social media and the messengers and stuff, you know, it's much easier, I feel. You know, yeah. People are willing to listen. They don't have to look at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's true. And I think that's one of the things. This one of the things that we thought about with bridges as well. The looking at you factor um, is um, there's a lot that goes with a person's appearance. So initially, we're ju it's just going to connect you into a a chat platform, basically a messenger um, uh, platform to have your conversation. We're not going to have pictures or or uh, um, even uh, custom emojis or anything at first okay. because. When you look at me, you can see a lot about me. You know, you can get an idea of my age. I'm a white guy, um, you know, but there are other people you can see much more and they bring a lot more bias to. Yeah, so just, very you know, true. You look at that person and you've got um, um, presuppositions about them. You look at someone who's got a, a, a turban on, you know, you've got presuppositions. Someone who's got a long beard or has, whatever. Visually, we, we have so much identified and so much that triggers in us. We feel like it's a better way to start with just kind of your words on a screen and that's it. Right. And, and that, that takes away some of those preconceived notions. From what them. about though, I got to ask the hard question. Yeah. How we, uh, what about fake profiles? Um, yeah. I mean, we're, we're going to be looking at those things on the back end. Again, if it's a fake profile, I think it's probably going to get poorly rated because you can't have a True. real conversation. Right. Even so up to people. Yeah. Yeah. They'll get washed out. And then if we find that, we're definitely going to take action on that on the back end, delete those profiles um, any way we can. Nice. Okay. That's good. That's good. I'm liking all this stuff. This is going to go far. Um, we're going to wrap it up. I appreciate you coming on, Heath. Everybody, yeah. it's Make Bridges. Uh, you can go to makebridges.com. The app's going to be rolling out. We'll have Heath come on our show again as we start rolling. Right. So everybody have a wonderful day. This is Adam Prine and Keith Fogelman. Fogelman, F-O-G-E-L-A man. <laughs> and look him up on makebridges.com. Thank you everybody very much for tuning in. Have a good Thanks day. A lot.